in the far northern lands that I call the lands of the north, there are many tales of a good God and the gifts they have given us. And there is one gift of which I would tell you that I think might be dear to your northern hearts as well. For when the gods had first met the men of Mid Middle Earth, they gave them gifts, and wonderful <coughs> gifts they were. And the gods, as is their wont, met together in Odin's high hall to discuss the gifts and point out who had the best. <laughs> and these were wonderful gifts from Odin. Gifts to rival in it, the spear, and the twin gifts to mankind of mead and poetry. From Thor, the war hammer, and the hammer in the tomb. From Tyr, the great god, binder of Fenris wool, the sword, and the gift of justice. <coughs> so it went from one god to another. From Freya, the gift of love itself. On and on and on, until they came to the god Mjord, the god of the sea. And they said, Mjord, what have you given the men? And he said, I have given the men the fish hook. And the gods waited. <laughs> and he looked around, smiled. <laughs> and finally Thor said, The fish hook. That's it. Quite <laughs> <laughs> yes, said Njord. What else do they need? Loki said, Well, you know, there are other ways to catch fish. <laughs> Sif taught them how to weave so they can make nets, and Odin gave them the spear and they can spear fish. And, uh, uh, the fish hook? <laughs> <laughs> the fish hook. And George said, well, yes, it's a good gift. And he, the other gods laughed at him, and his feelings were hurt. So he went out to the place where he felt most of all, walked along the edge of the sea. And the waves came up and gambled about his knees like puppies. And he could not decide what it was that was so amusing about the fish hook. But since the other gods seemed to think it was amusing, he would go unseen among the men and see what it was they needed. Perhaps he could get it to them. So he went down, walked among the men, and he looked at what they had. And they had halls, or houses at least, built long in the shape of the gods' houses, if not so grand. And they had tools, and they had weapons. <coughs> and it seemed to him almost that they had everything they needed. And then he went down to the side of the fjord, and he smiled. And he knew what he could give the men. So he went back and he walked among them until he found a man who built things of wool. And he knocked upon the door, and when the householder, whose name was Bjorn, opened the door, Njord made himself known to him, and Bjorn said, Uh, <laughs> <laughs> since this is the reaction of men when they are greeted by a god of Asgard, <laughs> and probably he reviewed everything he had done wrong lately. <laughs> and Bjorn said, Be at peace, good Bjorn, for I have come to give you a gift. And Bjorn said, Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and Bjorn sorted that out and figured he meant to come in, so he did. <laughs> and he sat by the fire and said, No, no, I have come to give you a gift. I am going to teach you to build a ship. And Bjorn said, we, we have boats, <laughs> and we have fish hook. <laughs> and Bjorn said, no, no, you have boats. They are squat, ugly things. I am going to teach you how to build a ship. Come walk with me. And they went and they walked, and there was a stream running down to the sea, and on it floated a dried leaf. And Bjorn said, look, you there. And Bjorn looked, <coughs> said, you sort of floats on the stem. And look you there, and there was a snake swimming through the water. And Bjorn said, see you how well he goes without legs. And Bjorn said, yes, but a boat is not a leaf. It is not a snake. And he said, wait. Come back. They went back to Bjorn's house. Bjorn took a piece of charcoal from the fire and drew upon a piece of wood. And as Bjorn watched, in his mind began to grow the thing that Bjorn was drawing. He said, yes. Yes, I see. I see. So it was, he got some of the other men from the village, who, when they were introduced to the god from Asgard, said, Ah! <laughs> <laughs> they began to work. They felled trees. They threw planks. They began there, on the beach, began to grow the skeleton of the great ship. The keel was made. The strakes made. Ribs put in. 
But this is the nature of men when they are confronted by anything new. They said, ah, oh, seems wrong. These rib things ought to be attached to that spine thing there. Ah, it'll never work. Mm -hmm. They hewed a mast from solid oak tree, carved a mash, mast fish, set up the mast. And the women of the village <coughs> wove cloth to be put in the sail. And the men said, oh, this will never work. You can't catch the wind in a piece of cloth. This thing will turn right over and we'll all die. <laughs> but Niord kept them working. And all this time, Bjorn, who was directing the work, was carving on the stern of the prow of the ship. We kept the carvings covered when he was not working on them, so no one knew precisely what they were. And they built. And they built. And gradually, there on the sand was the long, sleek dragon. Draga. And the sail was put up. The oars were laid in. And the men began to push it to the sea. And when they reached the water, when they were no higher than their hearts, it broke free from them and floated on the waves as lightly as a leaf. And they forgot their doubts and climbed aboard, and Bjorn took the cloths from the carvings he had made, and there was the great serpent head of the first dragon ship. And on the tail, the interlocking spirals. And that first ship they called the Ord Serpent. And the men forgot all their fear and began to laugh. And they knew that now, anywhere there was water, they could go. Anywhere there was water, no deeper than the height of a man's heart, they could go. And they turned their eyes south. <laughs> <laughs> Where men had riches, but had forgotten the gods of Asgard. And they took their weapons and they went forth singing to build legends that will never die. And Bjorn, who was ever after known as Bjorn Shipwright, built more ships. And Bjorn went back to Asgard. <laughs> <laughs> but he did not have to go to the hall of Odin to brag on what he had done. For Odin's ravens had seen all and flown before him. And when he walked into that great hall, the other gods stood up to honor him. For they had given men the means to have a home, and to build a farm, and to fight. But Njord had given men freedom, and freedom is the greatest gift. What? Yeah.